I encourage you to try to get rid of all the distractions and focus because I believe God has an amazing word for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. Well, we're continuing on our subject, Faith Experiences. The foundation text for that is in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and verse 5, Paul was writing to the church, a group that he was ministering to, and he said to them in verse 4, that his speech and his preaching was not with persuasive words of human's wisdom. They were with persuasive words, but not with persuasive words of human wisdom. He said, matter of fact, my speech and my preaching were with persuasive words in demonstration of the Spirit and the power. When the Holy Spirit demonstrates himself or manifests himself, it truly is a move of God. It is, in and of itself, a faith experience. And when God moves in your life or in my life, faith in God will be the result. Amen. He says, my words were not with human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith, as a result, would not be in the wisdom of a man, but in the power of God. Amen. Amen. Then another foundational text for us tonight is in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. These three are the platform for, for which we build upon tonight. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, of course, we've been in the book of Hebrews, all these four parts. And we pick up now in verse number 7. It says that by faith, somebody say by faith. By, by faith. faith. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became the heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. So notice here is our verse. We're, we're continuing in the book of Hebrews, looking at those faith hall of famers, those who through their own life and testimony have reached a place where they produced and received God's perfect will in their life. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible says that by faith, Noah, amongst other things, prepared an ark. Say that with me, Noah. Noah. By faith, by faith prepared. prepared. And then the last verse, as a foundation, is in the book of Peter. Peter also mentioned Noah in his writing. And I thought it good, as it seemed good to the Holy Spirit, to look at 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 20 to note this as well. He's talking about a group who formerly were disobedient. When once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared. While the ark was what? Being, being prepared. prepared in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. Well, we see, of course, in Hebrews, and we see in the book of Peter, that it was by faith that Noah prepared. Right. Right. I want to call this message tonight, Noah prepared by faith. Amen. Noah prepared by faith. So as we are in this series on faith experiences, we've defined for you and I what a faith experience is. A faith experience is when you experience God in a supernatural way, and it leaves you firmly persuaded, mm -hmm. which is why we call it a faith experience. Because right. you can have a supernatural experience, and it leaves you in doubt. You could be trying to figure out what just happened. Something supernaturally could have happened. You could have saw something. You could have heard a voice. You could have, you, you, you could have had a dream. And, and you know it was supernatural, but you're wondering. You're, you're, you're doubting what that means. But what a faith experience is, is when you have a supernatural experience with God, and it leaves you totally convinced. 
Amen. Maybe you have an experience with God and he gives you a peace that passes all understanding. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have an experience with God and you hear a still small voice telling you on the inside that everything is going to work out just right. right. Whatever that experience is, if it's a supernatural experience where God is manifesting himself to you, if it leaves you firmly persuaded, then we can call that assuredly a faith experience. Amen. So I want to talk to you again tonight about the different ways that God moves. And I also want to talk to you about you making preparations for the next big move of God in your life. Amen. So there's two real things that I want to talk about tonight. I want to talk about, again, the different ways that God moves in the earth, but particularly how he moves on behalf of us. I don't know about you. I need God to move in my life. Amen. Amen. I need God to move in my life this week. Amen. Amen. And, and, and for the things that he has ordained for us, for us to accomplish his will in our lives, we need God to show up. Amen. Listen, if I can get this by my intelligence, then why do I need God? If I can get what God intends for my life, uh, by my good looks, then, then why do I need God? <laughs> if I can get what God has prepared or planned for my life, then why, you know, on my education, you know, my bachelor's degree in this, or, you know, my, my training in that, then why do we need God if we can get it without Him? Right? Yeah. But I don't know about you, we need God Amen. to walk in the full. So I'm going to talk to you about the different ways God moves, and I want to talk to you about you preparing, like Noah did, preparing for the next move of God. Did you know that God could move on your behalf and you totally missed it? Yes. Yeah. You can have something moving over here, but because you didn't recognize it, you didn't know that was a move of God, you could totally miss it. And he'd run up again and he's trying to get your attention and totally miss it again. But how many of y'all know if you become king to the ways that God moves. Yeah. You can't Amen. put God in a box. Amen. You can't expect him to only move one way and move that way every time. Yeah, yeah you had a dream and that dream turned out to be confirmed. And, all right, well, you haven't gotten a dream again. Well, don't put God in the dream only box. <laughs> he might speak to you through a neighbor. He might speak to you through a stranger. He might speak to you through somebody like me. Amen. Amen. Don't limit the ways of God. Right. There's a lot of ways that he can get it done and get Amen. it to you. Amen. Amen. So there are nine ways God moves in the earth, and the Bible talks about these with absolute clarity. I want to talk to you again about them for a moment. In the book of 1 Corinthians particularly, he talks in this entire chapter about the ways that God moves. From verse 1, he says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I, I do not want you to be ignorant. Now, don't be confused about the words spiritual gifts. What he's talking about is when God moves. And listen, anytime God moves on your behalf, that's a gift. Why? Because you don't deserve anything from God. So for him to give you something, that's a gift. For him to do something for you, that's a gift. Come on, y'all yeah, yeah. have to preach this. Right. Yeah. For him to do anything on your behalf, yeah. it should be appreciated. It's not because yeah. you're entitled to. Yeah. He's yeah. doing it out of his love and out of his benevolence. Yeah. It is indeed a gift from God. Yeah. So concerning the moves of God, Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant. I'm going to give you nine different ways that Paul gave the church. And he's saying these are the nine different ways that God moves. And you can now, because it's in Scripture, limit the move of God to one of these nine areas that he talks about. Amen. Amen. Now, the last verse in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is verse 31. So after talking to them about these moves of God for an entire chapter, he says, but earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more yet excellent way. So he talks to them about nine different gifts or nine different moves of God, and he says what you should do now 
is covet earnestly, earnestly desire the move of God in your life. Now, I have to pause there because my question to you is, how earnest have you been about your desire for God to move in your life? He says we ought to earnestly desire God's move. Again, anytime he moves, it's a gift. Right. And he's telling us to earnestly desire. You know, we have early morning prayer here Tuesdays and Thursdays. And, you know, one of the primary things that we as a congregation are praying about corporately is the move of God. Yes. Listen, when we gather ourselves together, we want God to manifest himself. Amen. We want him to move in and out every eye. We don't want one person, whether viewing this message or here present, we don't want one person to encounter God and not know it. We want the move of God in our service. Amen. Do you know that God is a God of miracles? Yeah. Yeah. Signs and wonders? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It ought to be commonplace yeah. that blind eyes are being opened. Yeah. It ought to be commonplace in the church, maybe yeah. not the world, yeah. but it ought to be commonplace <laughs> that in the church we can bring in the sick yeah. and see the lame yeah. walk and the yeah. deaf to hear yeah. and the dumb to talk. Why? Yeah. This is where God meets. Right. Yeah. We ought to be able to experience it. So we ought to be earnestly desiring the move of God, whether it be independently, corporately, or nationally. Yeah. And we ought to know how he moves when he moves. So let's back up and look at part of what he talked about in chapter 12. So if you go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we read verse 1. Let's pick up in verse 4. He says this. There are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to flip that. There are different ways God moves. But it's still the same Holy Spirit. Amen. Right? The next verse says, there are differences of ministries, but it's the same Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm going to flip it. There are different ways that God moves, but it's still the same Lord. Mm -hmm. All right. Then the next one he says, and there are diversities of activities. Those are movements. Right. All right. Diversities means different. He says, there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Let me flip it. There's different ways God moves, but it's the same God who's doing it all in all. Amen. So don't get confused about what he said in verse 4, 5, and 6. He's talking about the way God moves, and he's going to give you nine different ways that he moves, but he tells you no matter if it's these three or those three or another, Anytime you see the movement of God, it's the same Holy Spirit, it's the same Lord Jesus, it's the same God, the Father that we serve, that's moving. Now, incidentally, you know, we believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But incidentally, did you know that the Holy Spirit is the agent of God in the earth? He is literally God's agent on earth. Amen. From the beginning in Genesis, right. when creation was being formed from heaven, they said, let us make man. They said from heaven, let there be light. Yeah. But notice, it was the Holy Spirit who hovered yeah. over the waters and Amen. moved yeah. when God said. Amen. Not only that, he's the agent of uh, 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 of God in the earth all the way from Genesis to the book of Acts mm -hmm. where the Bible says and on the day of Pentecost Amen. the Holy Spirit was poured out in that place. Amen? Amen. 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 Well let's keep reading in verse number 7. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7 says but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. I'm going to again flip it to say but the move of God is given to profit every man with all. Yeah, all right. The God wants to move on every man's behalf. Yeah, yeah. Saved, unsaved. Yeah. He makes it rain on the yeah. just, come on, yeah. and the yeah. unjust. Yeah. Right. So the manifestation of the Spirit, listen, when he manifests, he's not showing up just to say, hey y'all. <laughs> if he showed up to say, hey y'all, how many of you would leave firmly persuaded in God in one way or another? Yeah. You would go home and say, God was at church tonight. But what happened? He just said, hey, y'all. <laughs> and as a result, no weapon formed against you could prosper. Why? Because you're firmly persuaded that, hey, y'all, God is on my side. Amen. Amen. And so anytime the Holy Spirit manifests himself, he is moving, God is moving, and faith should be 
the result. So the manifestation is given for everybody. Verse 8. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another, faith, or as one translation says, special faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles by to another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to everyone individually as he will. Amen. Now, in those verses, he said a mouthful, but don't, get, don't be confused. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm telling you about what I'm going to tell you is because I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be confused about how the Holy Spirit, how God moves in the earth. Whether it's this way, that way, that way, or another. I'm about to give you a list. But no matter what movement you have, by God, is still God. Amen. And then he breaks it down. One by the same. One by the same. What's happening here? If you were to study these, as I have, and I'm teaching you, you'll see that there are nine ways God moves in the earth. Now, I don't want you to just take that from my word. Study this. Look at Genesis through Revelations, and if you see any movement of God outside of these nine areas, then text me, email me, write me, pull me to the side, and let me know. You won't find it, but if you did, amen. Let me know. Why? Because these are by Paul's instruction, the nine different ways that God moves. Yeah. That means we ought to be able to go back and find them from Genesis to Malachi, all in the ministry of Jesus. Any movement that Jesus made, any vision that he said, any prophecy that he proclaimed, any miracle that Jesus performed must fall into one of these nine ways that God moves. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let me give you three groups of three. There are three ways that God reveals himself to people. Three of these, three ways, reveal. Number one is the word of wisdom. Number two is the word of knowledge. Number three is the discerning of spirits. All three of these reveal something. The word of wisdom reveals something. The word of knowledge reveals something. The discerning of spirits, if you, and discerning of spirits is not being nosy and knowing that your neighbor has a sin problem. I have the spirit of discernment. Nowhere in the Bible is that phrase, spirit of discernment, ever found. So stop saying that you have a spirit of discernment. If it is that you have functioned by the move of God in the discernings of spirits and you saw something about somebody supernaturally, then so be it. But don't call it the spirit of discernment. <laughs> it's discerning of spirits, which is just simply seen into the realm of the spirit. Yeah. So if you have a vision, if you see something in the realm of the spirit, whether it be good or bad, it would fall into this specific category. Right. But let me move on. There are three ways God moves where he does something physically. Three ways do something. What is that? Special faith. Working of miracles gifts of healings. They are, these are three ways that God moves supernaturally to do something. So when Jesus spoke to Lazarus and said, come forth, that was God moving on Lazarus' behalf, right? Well, you can't cause the dead to be raised by regular faith. It has to be a special faith, a supernatural ability to believe God without doubt. And Jesus did that. It was by faith. He spoke and it happened. That's what Jesus said. He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. That's normal faith. This is special faith above and beyond. He spoke to Lazarus, said, come forth and he came. That was special faith. Working of miracles, gifts of healings, all of those are literally God doing something in the earth. Boy, y'all are quiet. Amen. <laughs> then the third group are three ways that God moves where he says something. So whether it be in Genesis or whether it be in Revelation, if you see God saying something in the earth, he's speaking it by one of these three means. 
prophecy, which is simply a divinely inspired utterance in a known tongue. Mm -hmm. Well, if God, divine, speaks, mm -hmm. amen, that is a word of prophecy. Praise God. Amen. And when we speak on behalf of God, we are essentially saying, I am inspired by God to say this in a language. How many of y'all know God could speak in a language that you don't understand at all? That's right. Right. I mean, right. you know, from what I understand, dolphins have their own kind of language. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't just do that on, on, on live Facebook, right? <laughs> what about the whales of the ocean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, God can speak about your future in whale, but what benefit would that be to you? Right. <laughs> so what prophecy is, is a divinely inspired utterance in a, in a, in a language that you can understand. Amen. A person from Africa or Asia or South America may not understand at all what God just said, but when you hear God move or speak in the earth, it could be by one of these three. There's three ways that God speaks. He says it through prophecy. He can move and say it through diverse kinds of tongues, which also require then he could say it through interpretation of tongues. Now, I'm teaching these, so we'll continue to look at those. But as we go through the great hall of fame, I want you to find and identify the move of God in one of these nine areas or another. In other words, what move of God was manifested when Noah built an ark? Or when Abel gave an offering? Or when Abraham got ready to kill his son? Amen? Amen. I'll say amen to myself. Amen. 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 Turn to Isaiah chapter 55. Now, in Isaiah, the 55th chapter, in the ninth verse, Understand this. The Bible says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my, what? Ways. What are we talking about tonight? We're talking again about the ways, plural, God moves. My ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your, what? Thoughts. So notice, he's talking about the ways of God. Amen. Amen. It's not just one way God could move to solve your problem. Mm -hmm. What big thing are you up against right now? Maybe it's a financial thing. Well, I've heard people say that God's got a million different ways that he could get that money to you by tonight. Right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, what I'd like to say, somebody said a million. What I'd like to say, there's nine different ways <laughs> that God could get you what you need. By tonight. Amen? Amen. So notice God says about his ways, my ways are higher than your ways. And their ways, uh, plural. Right. Another scripture that blesses me along this line is the book of Psalm 100, stands, 103, stanza 7. In stanza 7 it says, he made known his ways to Moses and his acts or actions to the children of Israel. You know, people quote and say that the Lord moves in mysterious ways. Right. His ways are beyond what we could know. Well, I mean, yeah, that was said in the Old Testament, but if you come over in the New Testament, it says, who has known the mind of the Lord that we, sh that we could instruct him? And then he answers the question, but we have the mind of Christ. Right. But besides that, the Lord's ways are not mysterious. He is not trying to hide his will from you. Amen. He's not trying to make your life purpose so hard that you can't figure it out. Amen. Just like he did with Moses, just like he did Amen. with the children of Israel, he is doing with you and I tonight. Amen. Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant about the way God moves. Amen. Psalm says that he made his ways known unto Moses. Well, God is no respecter of persons. If he made his ways known to Moses, then I'm bound to have his ways made known unto me. Show me your glory. Show me your goodness. Move in my life. I want to see your hand move on my behalf. He will make his ways known. And you'll be able to know. God moved this way in my life. God moved that way. God did this, and this was the result of that. Amen? Amen. Right. Amen. About your situation, what are you thinking? 
His ways are higher than your ways, but also his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. How will what you need to happen get done? God's got ways to get them done on your behalf. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that was talking about the move of God. Let's talk now about you being prepared, you and I being prepared for the next move of God in our lives. Prepared to the point that we're not going to miss it and we're actually getting ready for, for it. Amen? Amen? In Matthew chapter 25, we have the story of the ten virgins, five were wives and five were fools. What I want you to see in this story briefly is that what made those five virgins wise that were wise was that they, like Noah, prepared themselves for the next move of God in their lives. Amen. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 1, it says, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, and five of them were what? Foolish. Then those who were foolish took their lamps, but they didn't take any oil with them. Think about that for a moment. They're going on a journey. They know enough that they need this, but they didn't take their time in preparing for their journey. You and I are on a journey through this life. Amen. And God has a divine destiny that's filled with all good things planned and prepared ahead of time already for you and I. How we fulfill God's will and destiny for our lives is by faith. And I'm here to tell you tonight, friend, faith prepares. Amen. These five were excited. Maybe they ran out in haste, but they didn't take time. Have you ever gone on a trip and you packed or you thought you packed? <laughs> My wife actually likes to pack a week ahead of leaving. I like to pack like right before I head to the airport. <laughs> so we've been trying to find a balance and she's been nudging me because we get out of town and sure enough, she's forgot something. <laughs> Come on, you ever been there? Oh, I don't have my belt. Oh, I don't have this. Or oh, no, I'm too. something told me I, I was supposed to take that. I knew that. And we end up left leaving something. Why? Because we didn't take the time to prepare properly. I don't know about you. I don't want to arrive at that moment of destiny in my life and find myself not prepared. Amen. So these five that were foolish, they took lamps, but they didn't take oil with them. But verse 4 says, but the, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So they were prepared and the others were not. I went to Rainbow Bible Training Center, and for years I would hear Brother Hagen and others quoting Brother Hagen say again and again, time spent in preparation is never lost time. Amen. What big thing in your life has God revealed to you as a part of his plan that you are not preparing for? There's something big that God has for you. But you got to prepare for it. How do you know that? Because that's what faith does. Faith prepares. One other scripture before we look directly at the, the story of Noah. Uh, in Proverbs chapter 21, my, my friend Pastor Andre, he preaches this. I mean, he brings it up in conversation. And it is so true. The Bible says in Proverbs 21, 31, the horse is prepared for the day of battle, but deliverance is of the Lord. See, a lot of times, because the battle is not ours, yeah. but God's, yeah. well, if the battle is God's, then I don't need to prepare for it. Mm -hmm. Why do I need? I'm not, I don't need to fight in this battle because the battle is not mine, but the Lord's. And so why do I need to be prepared mm -hmm. for the battle? The, the, and, and, and so then you have scriptures like this. The Bible says even though the battle belongs to the Lord, even though the deliverance is the Lord's, you still have to prepare the horse. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because while deliverance is on its way from God, yeah. if the horse gets spooked, yeah. come on somebody, because of the, yeah. 
the, 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 the threat of violence yeah, because yeah, yeah. the bombs that are going off. Yeah, yeah. You know, David said a thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 by my right hand. Listen, but, but it won't come near me. He had faith in God right. that oh, even though bad things are happening all around yeah. me, God is going to deliver me. Amen. But listen, child of God, you can get spooked in a battle. Yeah, yeah. You can Amen. get freaked out right in the midst of Can I say yeah. that? Yeah. Freaking, freaking, freak out is not a cuss word. If it is, I mean, email me and I'll try to take it out. Of my <laughs> but you can have something totally trip you out Amen. to the point where you want to give up. Yeah. Where yeah. you want to throw in the yeah. towel. Yeah. Where, yeah. where you want to quit. Why? Because you got spooked uh -huh. in the battle before the Lord's deliverance showed up. Yeah. Man, I'm preaching good tonight. Bless the Lord through me. Amen. Amen. The horse is prepared. The horse is what? Prepared. And notice, by faith, Noah prepared. Amen. That's the word of the Lord for somebody. Amen. See, Faith Family Church right now, we're not preparing to be a small church. Amen. We're preparing to reach thousands upon thousands. Amen. Amen. And, and the big things that God is not just stuff that we've conjured up in our own mind. The things that he has revealed. The plans. The idea. I don't know what, what your life consists of in its entirety. But God's got big things planned for your life. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't see you begging, borrowing, and, 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 and being sorrowful. No. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and he has no sorrow with it. Listen, if you can't handle a hundred thousand dollars well, what makes you think you can handle a million dollars well. You should be preparing yourself for wealth, abundance, and increase in every area of your life. Why? Because God's got big plans for your life. He says, I hasn't seen nor ear has heard the things that I've prepared for those that, 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 whose heart are right towards me. Amen? Amen. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. There are thoughts to give you a future and a hope. And you better believe the future that God has has is, a, is a big future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. He's able, I'm just preaching right now. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you could ask or think. He's got big things on his mind. Big things in your future. No small thinking here. Amen. Amen. Well, if those big things are going to happen, you've got to be ready for them. Amen. What big thing in your future has God revealed as his will for your life? I want you to think and meditate about that. My question to you tonight is, are you preparing for it? In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, which is where we start, we'll finish along this line. It talks about, by faith, Noah, being divinely warned of God, now, that's prophecy automatically. Mm -hmm. Prophecy is the divinely inspired utterance in a known tongue. Essentially, it's God speaking to you. So anytime anybody from Adam to the book of Revelation, when God speaks, it is prophetic. Yeah. Amen. 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 Noah was divinely warned by God of things not yet seen. At that time, Nobody had ever seen rain on the earth. Yeah. And I'm asking you, what big thing has he revealed to you that he wants to do in your life and in your future? Think about how big the ark itself was, uh, things not yet seen. He moved faith, acts. It has to be something that activates faith. He moved with godly fear, and he prepared an ark. Do you know that the ark is a big thing? Yes. I think it's like 400 feet. It's almost as long as a football field. Wow. At that time, we're not talking about making a little boat or a raft. <laughs> God showed him you will need a vessel, told him how wide it would be, how long it would be, how tall it would be, that all of these animals will supernaturally come to you and go inside and live peaceably with one another for all the time until the water. That was a big thing to God. Do you know how long it took Noah to build the ark? It was something like 70 or 80 or 90 years. And of course, you got all theologians on the internet. If I got it wrong, shh, don't be cool, man. <laughs> I don't 
don't know exactly how long it took, but it wasn't overnight. No. It was a period of time, and you can actually go through and look at and study it, and you can see. But notice, faith prepares even for stuff that's well off into the future. Yeah. He didn't give up hope, though it never had rained. And year after year and year after year and tree after tree and tree after tree, he didn't throw in the towel and say, well, God, I need proof that what you showed me is actually going to come to pass. No, he just kept preparing. He kept preparing. What else do we see here? He did it for the saving of his household. He did it also by which he condemned the world. He did it uh, as he became the heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. As I get ready to close in Genesis chapter 6, I just wanted to highlight a few verses of Scripture. And I want you to overlay the elements of faith that we've been learning in this story. I want you to overlay why is faith important to Noah? What is faith to Noah? How did Noah get faith? And then how did Noah work his faith? And we know that these four things only access the grace of God. Amen. Amen. I want you to see these in the story. If you look at the book of Genesis chapter 6 and verse 7, the Lord said, there it is, that's the gift of prophecy right there. I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things, birds of the air, for I'm sorry that I've made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. And the Bible says that Noah walked with God. All right. Just on last week, we talked about by faith, Enoch walked with God. How do you walk with God? You can't see him. You can't feel him. You can't touch him. But by, the Bible says that by faith, Enoch walked with God. Now we read tonight that by faith, Noah walked with God. He did it consistently, year after year, year after year. So much so, we see having happened what took place. If you jump down just for the sake of time in verse 12. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, and all flesh it had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said, come on, y'all, right. to who? Noah. He said to Noah, the end of all things has come before me. I've seen it. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with them. I mean, Noah could have been out there on that day that he's walking with God and God said that. Doesn't look that bad. I know people are acting crazy and there's a lot of things going on. But look at the, look at the birds. They're happy. Look at the animals. They're doing well. Look at the sky. It's blue. What do you mean that the end of the earth is coming? I don't see that. But evidently, these prophetic words from God persuaded Noah. If the end of the world is coming, faith is important to Noah for the saving of his own household. For the saving of his own life. How many of y'all can see? Him believing God is seriously important. And him pleasing God is also important through it. The next verse is said, God said to him, make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out. He then, in the next few verses, tells them how big to make it, how tall to make it, etc., etc. What is an ark? He doesn't know that. He's got to believe that this blueprint that God has given him, you may get a blueprint about an idea, a design, or a business, and it's God revealing it to you. And it doesn't make sense because they didn't teach you that in your business school. By faith, you've got to believe that you've heard from God and what he said will come to pass. Amen. We're finding the elements of faith. What is faith? It is a firm persuasion. It's not proof. It's a persuasion. And I can tell you, Noah allowed God during those walks to persuade him to believe that there's going to be this thing called rain that comes and it's going to fill the earth and we're going to need a boat to be in and that all these animals are going to come. He was firmly persuaded. Then verse 17, I'm almost done, so if you didn't get it, get it now. Amen. Well, how do you get faith? Somebody said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's incomplete. 
What we've learned is that faith comes by hearing an anointed message from God to you and you accepting it as true in your life. Amen. If you believe that God heals, that's good. But it may not be good for you. Because you can believe that God heals, but for some reason believe that healing is not for you. You've got to believe that God heals and that he has already healed you. Let's keep going. This is supernatural. In verse 17, amongst giving him instructions, he's talking to Noah. God says to him, and behold, I myself am bringing floodwaters to the earth. What is that? I'm going to destroy from under the heaven all flesh, which is the, the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. The key in this verse is the word behold. Somebody say behold. Behold. If you look at the word behold, it means to look upon or to gaze upon. When he says behold, he's saying look. Look at this. At this moment, this is one of the ways God moves. He'll show you something about your future. He'll, he'll literally show you something. About, he'll show you the next house. Right. He'll show you the next car. He'll show you the next spouse. No, that's only if you've ever been divorced. Amen. <laughs> I just made somebody mad with that. Please, please don't write no letters on that. But he'll show you your future. He'll show you that spouse that you are married to that you want to get rid of. He'll show you them in their best days in the future. He'll show you something. Why? So even though it doesn't look like that right now, you can believe without doubt. Oh, I'm preaching good. I pray for you. He said, behold, he showed it something. How do you get faith? You get faith when you hear God or you experience God. This is a move of the Holy Spirit. He's experiencing a vision. Right. I can imagine that he could actually see the suffering that man would encounter when those floodwaters came. I believe that's why he preached so hard for year after year and decade after decade. There's a flood coming. Oh, you silly moly. Noah, you don't know, man. What are you talking about? It's never rained. Up until the day that the flood came. I close with verse 22. Thus Noah did. Why is faith important to Noah? What is faith to Noah? How did he get it? But once you get it, you got to work it. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. You can hear all this good preaching and say, oh, yes, amen. But if you don't do anything, there's four ways that faith works. Faith says something. Faith does something. Faith is patient. And faith works by love. The Bible says that Noah did something based on what he was persuaded with. According to all that the Lord had commanded him, so he what? He did. Amen? Amen. 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 What are you preparing for? Faith prepares for the best that God has. Fear prepares for the worst. Right. While faith prepares for the best. Amen. Are you preparing for the worst phone call that you could ever get from that child? Are you preparing for the worst news that you could ever get for that boss? Are you preparing for the worst diagnosis from that exam that, 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 that you're going to take? Faith prepares for the best. Amen. If you believe in God to have a baby, faith prepares for that baby. Yeah. Faith buys baby clothes. Yeah. Faith <laughs> makes a room for the baby, a nursery. Faith prepares for the best. Stand up on your feet. I challenge you to understand that these nine different ways that God moves are the ways that he moves and to begin preparing for the next best thing God has in your life. Amen. God bless you. Amen.